Hello, welcome to Guide Me. In this demo, we will show the basic workflow of dental implant treatment planning using an optical scan of patient's plaster model or intraoral scan as the base for surgical guide design. Guide Me starts a new project by opening DICOM series. First, we select any one of the DICOM files of the patient scan. The system will load the data set. Guide me a user interface has menus, toolbars, sagittal view, axial view, coronal view, a 3D window for the working object, a 3D assembly view, is the workflow panels, case preparation, treatment planning and analysis, diagnosis notes, object management, surgical guide design, generate reports. In the 2D cross-section views, we have region of interest box and handles, tool bars, and slice lines. The slices lines are corresponding to region boxes in other views by their colors. We can drag the handles and cut the displayed area in 3D views. Adjust the threshold or contrast and brightness in 2D views. Notice the 3D will follow and the threshold values are shown on the status message bar on the bottom of the window. This way we can have a quick overview of the case and identify the implant site. Next we will load the optical scan of the stone model. Select the STL file. The model is loaded. Before we align the model with CT scan we will do a bone segmentation. We can adjust region of interest first, or go ahead adjust the thresholds. Notice the white and red areas in the 2D views are the bone and teeth. If I seed points. Here are some X-ray scatters. We have both automatic and manual scatter removal tools, but for this case it yeah, is not necessary. Next we will superimpose the stone model over the patient CT scan. First we rotate the views so that we can see both scans in the same direction. Start specify markers. We will place points on both views on some good and clear tooth surfaces. Typically three or more points are needed. They don't need to be exactly at the same locations or same order. Please do not make the points evenly or symmetrically distributed. Then we click the align button. Typically the operation will take less than a minute. Actual time depends on how the markers are specified and how different the initial orientations of the scans are. Now the registration is done, the system tells us there is about 90 microns deviations between the two scans in the marked areas. We can inspect the results with the graphical views. We use mouse wheel to scroll through the slices and check how well the green curves follow the tooth contour. You can notice that the result is pretty good for this case. Check the 3D assembly view too. Next we will create a nerve model for this case. Before we do that, we want to adjust the arch curve. The nerve is about here, so we double click here to move the axial slice to this level. Drag the arch curve, adjust the handles. Then we do to the nerve channel toolbox. The 2D views are in panoramic mode now. Use mouse wheel to change slices to identify the nerve channel. We will create the left channel. Click the button first. Place point on the slice and scroll to other slices. Place more points. Notice other image windows are being updated in the same time.
right click to finish this channel. For this case we will only create the left side. Check out the 3D view. Give the bone model some transparency. You can see the nerve channel here. Now we are done with the case preparation and ready for implant placement. Give a tooth number. Click implant library button. This is the library management tool. Implant manufacturers and their implants are shown here. Please notice we do have tools in this dialog to add new implant makers and their implants to the library. For this case we want to choose an implant from Glidewell. Choose the compatible abutment. OK the dialog. Click the add button. We can use any of the windows to place implants. Click this location. Implant is placed. Now the implant and its placement widgets show up in all the windows. We can adjust implant by drag the handles, implants and the placement widgets themselves. Now we want to inspect the implant in a cross-section view. Click this button. Change contrast. Use mouse wheel to rotate the cross-section plane. This gives you a 360 degree view of your plan. This plane is corresponding to the white line in the axial view. We further adjust the implant until it looks good. Turn off the cross-section mode. Now we inspect the bone density of the surrounding area. Notice the color is mapped to Hounsfield unit values. Green and blue indicate good bone density. Orange might be a warning sign. Use mouse wheel to change the size of the surrounding area. Quit from the tool. Next we will show the tool for diagnosis notes. Click the snapshot icon. The system will capture a snapshot of the window, show it in the navigator. We can then edit the notes. Later or maybe in next session, when you want to review your case, you can just come back to this navigator, look through them, show a preview picture of a snapshot, or double click to make it current. This will bring you to the status you create the snapshot, other than just a static image. Let's take a look at our object navigator. Enter the tool. Select the bone structure from the tree. Change its color map to show bone density. Now the bone rendering is changed to bone density mode. Hounsfield unit values of the voxels are mapped to colors. Double click on the item. This will make the bone structure our working object. Make the nerve model current. Change its color. Now we save the project and close it. This concludes the first part of our demo.